So this is a demo of a React Native app that I recently finished for a client. And it's the MVP for a new product, which is a video recording app. And it begins with a login screen. If you try logging in without an email, you get notified, or a password, you get notified. Or try logging in with an invalid email and password, and you also get notified. There's an API, API on the back end that I was working with, and there were several different API calls at different points. Basically, whenever you see a spinner, is an API call being made. Um, but let's go ahead and do a real login. Touch ID, there we go, like usual. And there we go. So successfully logged in. The token that I received back from the API, I stored in async storage, which is like local storage, but for mobile apps. Um, and to demonstrate that you can now stay logged in, I'll go ahead and reload the app. <laughs> you shake you shake the phone to open the um, developer tools. This is kind of fun. So reload. And I have to download the JavaScript bundle again, which sometimes takes a long time and sometimes takes a short time. There we go. Automatic login because there's a token stored. So here is a list of the published videos. You see published and drafts. One other thing I implemented here was the um, reload, what's it called? Uh, pull to refresh is what it's called. So when I pull down, it gets the list of videos again because if you're part of a group that's using this app, if other people are posting videos, you want to get the new videos that are post that they're posting as well. And you can search the videos in the search bar. Publish and drafts both can be searched. Now the drafts are basically you've put in the information for the video, but you have not recorded it yet. So that's what those are. So if you click on press one of these videos, it brings you to the video details. And that was another API call to fetch the details of a specific video, which has the total views and unique views. And here are three different options. Uh, the either view it in, uh, in the browser. Um, I'm not going to press that because I'm not disclosing the, uh, the branding for this product. Um, the share option, which opens up the different apps on your phone you can share it with. Um, and then also edit. And I notice I have a typo here, so I'll go ahead and change that actually. Oh look, autocorrect, isn't that nice? <laughs> All right, so I can save changes, and it does another API call to get the details again, and you see the correction, and when I go back to home, and yet another API call, and you see the updated title there as well. If you want to add a new video, you push the Add button, enter your title, let's say, my awesome video, how about that? Very fun, all my videos are awesome, of course. <laughs> Um, now you can do the video only or a Calendly link is another feature which you need in your profile already in case someone wants to set a date or something. Uh, include contact info or not. At this point, if I click record video, it will save it as a draft. Which means if I click re record video and then I decide I get distracted, I'm not ready to record right now, I click cancel and it goes back to the list, and then in drafts, I have my awesome video. From there, I can either delete my drafts, or when I'm ready, I can film my video. I decided to lock it in landscape mode for the filming, and portrait mode for the rest of the app. So I can record, <laughs> and preview. <laughs> very nice video, very awesome. Uh, if I don't like it, I can go back and record again. Also, I can decide to use the back camera instead uh, if I want a higher quality camera. Otherwise, default is the front camera. I'll go ahead and record another one. And finally, when I'm satisfied, I publish. Now, there's an error because access to AWS storage is denied, right? I don't have access anymore because I'm done with this. So basically the stages of publishing a video, that was the most complex process in this whole project. 
I used Expo for this uh, as opposed to the bare React Native client. And the Expo camera returns a video URI, which is basically just a file path. So first I had to fetch the data from the file path and convert that data into a binary string so that it would be ready to upload. First I would request one of those pre-signed URLs from the S3 bucket and then I could send that data. And if I had access here, um, you would get the video published overlay with the three options of either sharing the video, viewing the video, or going back to the list of videos. So that is what I'll go do, is just go back to my list of videos and I can go ahead and just delete that one. Published, okay. And the last thing that I can do is log out in that. So yes, that was my React Native app.